here's the video review for Transformers Generations um, War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Um, I want to do this guy for a while. I have him sealed still. Uh, I picked this guy up cheap online. Somebody was selling. I figured, I figured I'd get a second one to open it to customize and to play with and just have another one. You know, just to mess around with because I haven't opened that one, the other one yet. But uh, as you can see, this is Optimus Prime's first video game appearance look you know, in the uh, War for Cybertron game as opposed to Fall of Cybertron, which I still don't understand how Fall of Cybertron, well, War for Cybertron ends. Fall of Tribers, so Fall of Cybertron picks up five minutes later and he's got a new body. Still don't understand that, but whatever. So you can see this is his Cybertronian alt mode. It does have a gun on top, which we will remove for now. Gun. He does roll pretty decently. Not bad. Uh, he is a very funky looking space truck, if you will. But uh, it is actually very clean looking. There's really no bits hanging off, though he does have visible face syndrome. Uh, so yeah. Got some uh, purpley glowy Energon bits, much like the Fall of Cybertron version. Especially when I added the Reaper labels like you saw. Um, he even has them on the wheels, which I don't think the Fall of Cybertron version did. I think the Repo labels had to add that. But he is very solid, very clean looking, which I do really cool, think is amazing. And he does have a pretty damn hard transformation, but we'll get through it. So yeah, here he is. Not a whole lot to say about this mode. I guess you saw the gun can plug in there. You know, not a whole lot can be said about it. Although, what is weird is there is no Autobot logo in alt mode. Which is pretty strange. Um, also, the plastic, it's hard to see on camera. Let's see if I can zoom in. The plastic has like a sparkly finish to it, which is very cool. Like this part is painted. This red bit next to the blue bit. Like the blue is painted too. Because it's all this gray color. But this is painted red. And this red is actually really nice. It's actually a lot nicer than the, the red plastic. It's a slightly different color. You can see it there. You can see how it's a slightly different shade of red. Because it's painted red instead of red plastic. But I kind of wish the whole thing was painted that red color. Because it's a lot nicer. The blue doesn't have... Well... Yeah, the blue doesn't really have the sparkly... Like the red. At least it doesn't show as a bunch of the red. It is very nice... Uh, color scheme. A nice, uh, nice paint, nice plastic. So yeah, let's just get down to transformation because it's going to take a minute. But uh, I did it a few times, so we should be alright. So I've seen other reviews on how to do it. Um, I've kind of figured out my way I like to do it. Uh, I'm going to start by lifting this panel up and then coming under here with the bumper and this front grill meat. I'm just popping that up. And this is all on one assembly. So we just kind of Fold that bit up and pull it out. You can see it's on this uh, accordion hinge. So then, take these little bits and just fold these out. Just like that. Now, what we're going to want to do is fold up the wheels halfway. Or at least just part of the way, just to get them unlocked. And then, come under here and unpeg. You can see there's a hook peg goes right here on the blue that hooks under the red and this blue panel is hooked into the side of what will be the arm so what I do is I hold this bit and pull up on the blue you can see the slot in the peg I mean the, the slot here in the peg there and then push the smokestack out of the way fold the wheel most of the rest of the way up and then lift up on this smokestack a little bit and there's a slot this whole big slot is going to peg in. There's a peg right here. It's kind of hard to see because it's all blue. So lift that up and swing it over. And that will hold on to there. Same thing over here. Unpeg it. Pop it off. Peg the smokestack onto it. So it should more or less look like that. 
I've seen other videos review, video reviews where they just, you can, I guess you could do it, just leave the wheels forward like that, but then they'll show in robot mode, pretty annoyingly. So, next, split the legs, and then unpeg them, they hook in. This blue bit right here hooks into this hollow part in the leg. Extend that, and now we're going to actually extend out. So it's normally like that, and we're just going to grab it here and just extend it all the way out. So it clicks. Uh, this will be the kneecap, so when you kind of bend it, you'll bend that, and then just flip the knee the rest of the way. Like that. So again, slide it, unpeg it from the hollow part in the leg. Slide it till it clicks, and then lift up on the kneecap. There we go. Now that the rest of the legs aren't in the way, you can fold the wheels all the way back and then flip up smokestacks. And then they don't peg in. Like this will lock in pretty well. This will snap up and it will hold just fine. That's not going to go anywhere, but it does not peg. So don't think it does. Uh, flip forward the toes. And there we have his feet done, and his legs done. And he does not like to stand in halfway transform mode. Okay, so now, these fenders peg in to the bumper. So we're going to unpeg those. And now we're going to pass them underneath this whole bit. So just pass them underneath, just like so. We need to get this bit in front. And then we can actually also lift up on these. We just need to get them behind this bit. Take what will be the arms, fold them out, and then up so that we have access to uh, this whole area. Take the wheels, flip the wheels back all the way. Okay. Now this looks like a jumble mess, but rotate the arms forward now. This is mostly just to get them out of the way. And then bring this forward. And then we're going to rotate it at the whole, okay. Hard to explain. There's two separate assemblies here. There's the assembly that this whole hood piece is on. That's right there. And then there's the waist assembly, which is right there. We actually want to rotate everything around 180 degrees. Such that basically you want this hood piece to be on the back. Like that. And you want the legs to face the nose part, and then you can fold it up, just like that. It's not going to lock in yet, but it will in a minute once we do this. What you're going to do is rotate the cockpit part 180 degrees, bring down the, the bumper, which also hides the abs, and then just kind of push this up. And Push this down and push on it and it will lock. And then fold these side bits in. It gives him his fake abs and everything. And his window chests. Now, we're almost done. Why does he even not want to stand? Oh, okay. Push the head forward, click it in place. And then the arms, we're literally just going to line them up so that they're, flip out the fist and then line them up so that they're, uh, they bend and everything the right way. You basically want this hole to face out. You want that bit to face in. So just, uh, watch out for all the panels. There's a lot of panels. Flip out the fist, rotate it uh, around this way, way so where it bends properly. Now with these panels, you're going to take the fender and fold it down and in, and take this little square piece and fold it up and in. So down and in, like 
Why are you being a pain? Oh, because it's already up. Up and in. They just sit there, and you can really just do whatever the heck you want with them. And then finally for this bit, collapse it in and fold it up. And you can basically position that any way you want. You can push it in more, kind of, if you wanted to. Kind of like that. So that it's more pressed up against his body and puts a bigger gap up here. I just like to leave it like that. I like it more flat. But, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, that's just aesthetic. Because it does not lock in anywhere. But there we have War for Cybertron Optimus Prime in his robot mode. And I'm just going to get him to stand up properly. So yeah, his face sculpt is just very standard Optimus. It does have some wear on the faceplate because probably whoever had it before me, when it had it in uh, vehicle mode, scraped the bottom of it. But uh, I'll get a silver sharpie and fix that at some point. Very cool looking, very beefy, which I do like. And remember, this guy was from 2011. So, uh, 2010, 2011? I think 2011. So they were made of, uh, Transformers were made of uh, beefier stuff. So for example, here he is with IDW uh, Ryan Packs. And you can just see the, just the mass difference. And remember, these two guys cost the same amount of money. They're the same price point. So, just bear that in mind. Kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? So yeah, as far as articulation, head is on a ball joint, pretty nice range motion. Shoulders can go up and down a little bit for, because the transformation rotates all the way around at the shoulder, the outer shoulder part. It goes out at the shoulder, but not a ton because of all the panels. Uh, upper by, upper by, upper biceps, swivel, 90 degree bend at the elbow. And then straight, it doesn't go backwards at all. Rotates, no. Oh wow, I forgot about that. The uh, chest bumper pelvic area piece actually locks the waist, so he has no waist articulation. Forgot about that. Legs are on ball joints. Uh, cut in the upper thigh. Bends about, it's not 90 degrees, but Ah, no, you just move the wheels out of the way, you know, getting... Actually, I take that back. You can get pretty darn good range of motion out of the legs. Just make sure the wheels aren't in the way. If you leave the wheels um, as far as they'll go, you'll get that much knee bend. If you just pull them out a little bit, you can keep going. And then feet are on a limited ball joint. There's not a lot of room there for tilting. But you will get some wiggle and... uh Bends at the toe for mostly for transformation, but you can still use it. So his gun does have a gimmick in it. Here's his gun. You stay there. Here's his gun, and what you can do is you can you can see there's a little spring right there. So that's like his vehicle mode version. And then what you can do is you can flick that, and now he has his robot mode version of the same gun. It does make it kind of floppy. You know, if the spring was a little bit stronger, you wouldn't really have that problem, but then you probably have kids poking their eyes out because apparently kids nowadays are really stupid. You can hold it just fine. Um, not too crazy about the gun because it doesn't look like any gun. I mean, maybe it might be from the game. I haven't played War for Cybertron in a while. So, it might be from the game, I'm not 100% sure, but it's not falling over. He is kind of top-heavy, but I mean, once you get him flat-footed, stay flat-footed, there we go. Yeah, he's pretty solid, once you get his feet flat. So yeah, um, this guy can be pricey on 
like eBay and such, but uh, keep an eye out. You should be able to find him for pretty fair prices. Uh, loose. I don't know what I paid. 10 bucks, maybe for it. Really not that big a deal. 10 or 15 shipped. Really not that big a deal. But if you don't have him and you like the video game aesthetic, because you do have to like the video game aesthetic, really to be into him, because that's what he's from. But P is still a very cool figure. Uh, I do kind of wish I had the Takara version because the Takara, the Takara paint job is amazing on this guy. Uh, I never picked him up, and those figures, you know, are a lot pricier than the U.S. version. They're like 30 or 40 versus 10 or 15. But I don't know if I ever see him pop up someplace. Maybe I'll pick him up. But uh, yeah, this guy actually does have a bunch of upgrades available for him. Um, there's actually a whole replacement chest piece. It changes the windows to, uh, I think, all red, but it gives them a matrix, which is a cool little kit. Uh, I'm not too crazy about that kit, but if you like, if you if you think Primes have to have a matrix in his chest, you know, it's a pretty easy way to get to get one for him. Um, there's also an axe which he had in the game, um, which I do have, and I should probably dig out and give in, give it to this guy, which uh, might do at some point. But yeah. My biggest complaint is just the gun is stupid. Uh, the wheels you can also, if you wanted to, kind of flare them out a little bit. But you don't have to. It's just a thing. And also, on the video game version, there was actually a Autobot logo right here that would glow. Like the panel lines would all come together and make an Autobot symbol, which is pretty cool, which obviously a guy doesn't do. But anyway. Yeah, like I said, if you don't have him and you wish to pick him up, I would check the aftermarket, check the forums and such before going on eBay because he goes for like 30 or 40 sealed on eBay right now. So just be aware of that. So yeah, this has been the video review for Transformers Generations for War for Cybertron Optimus Prime.